So after years of using the Logitech G920 for sim racing, you finally decide that with Fanatic's new sale where you can get a CSL DD for $200 with any wheel and pedal combination, you decide to pull the trigger on some general CSL pedals, the CSL DD, and looking through the steering wheels, there wasn't anything that really caught your eye apart from the McLaren GT3 wheel where it looks authentic to the race car that it's been used in, of course, many years ago. It's got a nice little LCD screen. It's got all sorts of very tactile buttons and everything. And you decide, you know what? This is the one that I want to get. So that being said, with the McLaren GT3 wheel by Fnatic, is it still worthwhile to purchase in 2023? Or are you much better off choosing something else? This video is brought to you by my awesome sponsors. Make sure to check out the affiliate links in the description below. Thanks again for all the support. Of course, my name is Matt and welcome to the channel as always. And today, like I said, let's talk about the McLaren GT3 wheel. When this wheel was first released, it was in a very interesting position in Fanatic's lineup where the only other wheel that was available in that same price range was the BMW GT3, no, GT2 wheel, also for $200, or rather 200 euros, I believe. So that being said, it was definitively the cheapest wheel that Fnatic had to offer, which immediately made it the go-to wheel when the CSL DD was originally announced. So Fnatic had a rather interesting position here, having in their cheapest range, not one but two different licensed wheels, which meant that they had kind of full control over that price range because there were other companies that did in fact have cheap wheels and they also had licensed ones. But it's very odd to see both licensed and cheap in the sim racing market. Of course, I'm probably omitting Thrustmaster and various Ferrari wheels. But for a direct dry system to have that cheap of a wheel to be able to be compatible, it's kind of interesting, kind of nice. What made the McLaren GT3 wheel such a unique offer is that it has nine buttons, three dials, two switches, a joystick. It has a, a shift up and down kind of rocker paddle. And then it's got uh, two little paddles on the backside of the wheel as well. So with all that being said, you're getting more than enough button mapping for sim racing for at least kind of a beginner. As soon as you start getting into more like higher end systems or using like the DD1 and DD2, you're definitely going to want to have a wheel that has more flexibility or more buttons to be able to change different types of mapping and whatnot. Even going back from the standard Gran Turismo wheel that came with the GTDD Pro, there were like, I don't know, five different joysticks on it to be able to change like okay so i want this one to be traction control i want this one to be my uh fuel map i want this one to kind of change the map and all that kind of stuff and this one here all you've got is to kind of go down on this switch and then this one to kind of go up or down on the specific setting that you have so honestly not that wide of a selection but at the same time too what are you getting for 200 bucks? This is a steal in my mind for $200. But I think we're kind of getting ahead of ourselves here where this wheel was revolutionary for the time way back when, but it's now six, seven, eight years old. And there's only been one, one single update to the wheel where it was updating the rocker paddle on the back to be a little bit more slim, streamlined. This is, of course, the version one where it has the OG kind of rocker. And yeah, it's it's very clunky. And the second version is slightly less clunky, but there are still third party, you know, individuals that you can go to Etsy and buy like magnets to be able to make the shifting experience much more clicky. And that's stuff that you have to sacrifice for the price. What's interesting now in 2023 is that there are three wheels that you can buy sub $200. Yes, there's the Club Sport P1. There's the kind of orange BMW wheel. 
and then I think there's another kind of rally inspired wheel all around the same kind of price range. So if this is your first time buying a direct drive system or again, because they're actually CSL DDs in stock, finally, it makes the McLaren wheel not necessarily as desirable as it used to be. And this wheel too was even modeled after the McLaren 670, excuse me, the 650S or 650 GT3 car, which has no longer been racing for many years at this point. So it's, I'm asking kind of the question is, like I said before, is it really worth getting as it's such an outdated wheel nowadays? The market has also significantly changed as well. Within the past couple of years, we've had uh, companies like Moza come out of the woodwork. We've had, you know, Logitech release their own direct drive system. Thrustmaster has even uh, announced their own direct drive system that was backwards compatible with their huge library of hot swappable uh, licensed wheels. Primarily, think of all those Ferrari wheels that if you've been collecting over the years, how many of them that you can now use with a direct drive system. It's kind of crazy in my mind. In my mind, this wheel is potentially less desirable than it used to be. However, at the same time too, I still feel like that the price being where it's at is still a pretty competitive price within Fanatic's lineup. Of course, you've got the super high-end Porsche wheels for six hundred dollars or whatnot uh with you know the podium kind of hubs and the additional kind of i don't know what do you even want to call the little plates that come with them and then you've got the xbox compatible uh, universal hub and the playstation compatible universal hub but with this wheel this is really cool because it is both playstation and xbox compatible at $200, which is phenomenal. And with the other wheels, this is not the cheapest licensed wheel that Fnatic has to offer because of the uh, orange kind of BMW wheel. But at the same time, being able to have an official McLaren licensed wheel for $200, it's not bad. Again, the quality is kind of plasticky and it's not as cheap as wheels come but it definitely does feel kind of like a toy like you know that you're not driving with an authentic wheel or this is probably not the wheel that was being used for the actual mclaren race car which is what you get for the price the thing that this wheel also has to offer is it is the first closely formula styled wheel the cheapest one at the very least in Fanatic's lineup because with the other three wheels that are sub $200 it is that standard circular wheel and then even at $200 there's the other BMW circular wheel so then this wheel the thing that I found really cool is even though people may not necessarily like the McLaren licensing on it, there is a huge, huge third-party market for skins specifically for this wheel. So I've seen many different individuals who, rather than spending money on like a Formula One styled wheel that starts easily at $200, for those who got into the uh, Fanatic ecosystem early on and only had enough money to afford this guy, They've got, you know, Audi GT3 kind of skins. They've got Red Bull and Mercedes. Hell, even I've seen some pretty cool uh, Alpine kind of designs as well. So there is a whole customization market out there. And that doesn't even include adding the magnetic the little, I don't even know what you want to call them, the clickers to make the shifters feel less garbage per se. And the biggest thing that I love about this wheel, for lack of better words, it's party trick. I don't like calling it a party trick because it is insanely helpful to those who have disabilities where they're not able to use their legs for like pedals very well and they can only use their hands is this little dial in the middle 
So option A says clutch bite point. I was on option B, which was clutch and handbrake. Then we've got option C, which I'll get to in a moment, which is brake and throttle. And then there's mappable analog axes for whatever reason. If you want to have something else going on, you can use those. So I and my feet are completely off the pedals. As you can tell, I am now using these little clutch paddles down here as my throttle and brake input. And when I first found out about it, I was in awe because when I first got this, I think I got them clearing wheel like in January of 2020 or 2021. And then I got the CSL DD. I want to say like September or so, and then I didn't get the pedals for a while. So I was actually trying out Forza without pedals and just these little like clutch paddles here. Oh, sliding, sliding. <laughs> yeah, these paddles back here are very firm. It's probably due to the fact that I never really use them. If I actually used more clutch bite points and that kind of stuff, it might be a little bit more looser. So it's less difficult to push back on them at the same time too i didn't have to do any programming i didn't have to do any driver updates i didn't have to do anything and this again is with playstation 5 i just turned a switch and suddenly it just works in low key i think i might want to do the rest of the race in this because this is fun it's been a while since i've done this <laughs> And I think this is potentially the only Wheel and Fanatics lineup that's got this extra set of paddles back here, which again makes it amazing for individuals who love sim racing but have disabilities. And that's something that I think sim racing as a whole, we're starting to see more of, especially with the announcement of Forza Motorsport, where they're making it easier for those who are visually impaired to have kind of like audio cues to let them know when they're starting to fall off the track and whatnot. And that's a huge kind of market that sim racing is just completely ignoring is that, you know, individuals might want to drive a car, but just physically can't. So adding these additional ways of being able to help them out, I think is amazing. So props to Fanatic for just having this option because there may be individuals that use it that may have not been able to race before. So I just... I love it. I honestly love it. It's really cool. So at the end of the day, is the McLaren GT3 wheel by Fnatic still worth it in 2023? Of course, the answer is it depends. Now, if you are for the first time getting into the Fnatic ecosystem with the most recent sale where you can get a CSL DD for 200 bucks with the... Um, addition of a wheel and a uh, pedal set. You know, this wheel is a very good start. It is not the end all be all because please note in all of the videos that I've been doing for the past, I don't know, year, I haven't touched this wheel. I, I just haven't. There's been the Formula Club Sport wheel. There's been the uh, GT DDD Pros. Uh, standard Gran Turismo wheel, which honestly is hugely underrated in my opinion. And of course, we've got the Xbox Universal Hulk that I also have. So like this easily just gets forgotten about in my mind. But if this is your first wheel like this was mine, it has many additional buttons and ability to be able to adjust things that some of the cheaper wheels just don't have. And again, too, if you may have disability that requires you to use your hands for the throttle and the brake inputs, this is fantastic. I, going back, a lot of people, I remember a lot of people have discussed how bad the rocker paddle shifter is and originally I never understood it where it's like yeah I can maybe get it but after I've been using the Gran Turismo wheel and then the Formula Club Sport wheel and you get used to that magnetic kind of clicky feeling that's very realistic and the very true to life when it comes to racing 
And then you come back to this clunky kind of guy. It does take it a little bit, take you out of it a little bit, unfortunately. So it's, it's doable, it's workable. But again, there is lots and lots and lots of third party support for people have been able to just rip off the rockers and put the magnetic shifters back there and resoldered them on and the whole rest of it. And again, like I've been referring to, just adding magnets back there helps immensely. It just gives a much more tactile experience, per se. But all in all, this is $200. It gets you in the door with sim racing and with the Logitech G... What is that? G920? Is that it? G290? I can't even remember. I never owned one of them. But with those guys being close to 400 bucks, and you can get this for 200 this for 200 and pedals for 100 if you just save 100 extra bucks like you can get in the door with an incredible setup however don't get me wrong if you're into rallying this ain't it if you're into gt3 cars eh, this might be up your alley and if you're into f1 if you spend maybe 50 bucks more 80 bucks more or whatnot you can get into the formula style wheels and that might be more geared towards what you're looking for. But in my mind, I still think that there is value here with this wheel having the flexibility that it does, being able to have, being able to use the Fanatic control panel and adjust various different types of uh, parameters and button mappings and whatnot. I think this wheel does have a lot of good, good use cases here, and I'm not gonna lie about that. And like I've been saying before, this is only under the assumption that you are going to get Fnatic. Again, for the first time, if you are an individual who already has Fnatic pro products, I mean, if you really love McLaren, sure, I guess you can get this. But I imagine that within the next couple of years, we might see a new licensed product with Fnatic for McLaren, having a more up-to-date 720s gt3 car that would be nice to have that kind of updated wheel but as again if you already own fanatic product products as well if you have the universal hub you can just switch out the wheel rim with kind of the more rectangular looking guy and then you have some other options of your own there or it might be a little bit more comfortable you have a lot more buttons that you can use you have a lot more option as to where you want the buttons and all that kind of fun stuff. So getting in your door with just Fnatic with this, with their new sale for 200 bucks, you can get the CSL DD. I'm now currently repeating myself. Yes, that's, this is fine. I can't happen to ignore the competitors though, where you can get a really cheap setup from Moza. I think you can get them for sub 400, a wheel, a wheelbase, direct drive wheelbase and pedals. Yes, it is only for PC. So you don't have that console compatibility. But if you are just going to use PC, it's really hard to ignore Moza. It really is. I you know there's many other companies too that you can look into as well that will offer similar, if not better experiences. The thing that I've noticed with Fnatic is since they got into sim racing earlier, they're no longer much of a boutique company, which is nice to see because if there are issues, you can contact them and, you know, work things out. And I know many people have had issues working through that. There have been a lot of people who have contacted Fnatic and said, hey, my stuff is broken. And Fnatic said, like, yeah, we'll take care of you. But they don't ever post on social media because that's something not really social media post worthy, I suppose. With companies like Moza, they're still so brand new that it's... They're still figuring out all sorts of kinks in the system and whatnot. Which makes me a little bit more scared to communicate with some of their departments there. Where I might have less of an issue doing that with Fnatic, per se. So at the end of the day, all of this is just personal preference. Because this is an amazing part of sim racing right now. Is that... It has exploded in popularity, and it's not a monopoly. There isn't just one company that owns all of the products. 
I mean, Logitech has got everything from getting you in the door for the very first time to getting you into higher end sim racing, you know, setups. Fnatic has got you anywhere from mid range to high range and even further on. I mean, it's just, and then Moza is helping kind of bridge both of those where it's getting you in the door for the first time with real budget stuff and then going up and beyond into higher end direct drive wheels as well. So with all this being said, this is a completely different time frame than what this was originally released in. And I'm kind of glad because you have options, which is amazing. I love that. So is this wheel worth it in 2023? Yeah, I think it is. I really do. But again, you got to have the right use case for it. So if you like this content, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. We've got a lot more stuff coming on up in the future that you guys will be excited to see. So stay tuned for all that. Of course, I've been Matt, and I hope you guys have a great day today. Take care. Bye. Why aren't you donating? Ah!